Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and we're gonna talk about some budgeting. And Wellington's gonna help us. Look out, Bubba, look out. I've gotta get my notes, he was sitting on them. I got notes, guys, it's how it works around here. Oops. All right, so we are gonna talk about what I'm doing. Now, keep in mind, I am no financial planner. I, I don't know anything about like the deep dark finances and where to invest your money and all that. This is what I know. And this is what I'm doing this year in 2024. So, oh, I can't see. I got something on my glasses. We'll talk while I'm finding my glass cleaner. Um, 23, 22, 23 was for me all about paying off debt. And by debt, I mean mostly credit card debt. And that is complete. So I am credit card debt free. Well, that's a little bit of a fib. I do have a small balance I'm paying off for my tires I just bought, but in all intensive, for all intensive purposes, I am debt free. As far as credit card consumer debt goes, I still have my mortgage and I still have my car payment, which I am paying extra on to get that taken care of. So now it's like I need to figure out what I can do with this extra money and, you know, where is it going to best serve me? Now, I will start by saying that I do contribute to my 401k. You know, I do have a financial planner. I do have other stuff. This is like just my main monies. Um, and I really love the idea of like spending cash and saving but I'm not real great at it. I'm not going to lie because I just like the things. But this year is all for me about being intentional with my spending and not just spending it because I have it kind of a situation. If you look behind me, I have no lack of things in my life. So um, yeah, that's what 2024 is all about for me. So I took, I wrote down some of the steps that I'm taking and I thought I would share and maybe this can be helpful to you all as well. All right, so the first thing I did in 2023, like I said, is I finished paying off my debt. And if I didn't say this, I keep my business, my small business finances separate from my personal. Obviously, I'm assuming most people do that. Um, and by small business, I mean my YouTube channel, which does re uh, generate revenue. So thank you very much for watching. That does help me be able to have the funds to buy the stuff to show you. And also last year, I launched uh, my Etsy store. With, well, I've had my Etsy store, but I created a cross-stitch planner. And I sold that through my Etsy store and some sticker packs. Um, working on this next year's planner for 2025. My Etsy store still does have sticker packs in it. I don't have any right here to show you, but they're in there. Um, yeah. So with all that, that is separate budgeting. This is my personal finances. So I did want to be clear about that. Um, and as I said, I want to be more intentional about my spending. So how does that look in my life? Um, I downloaded a free, I bought Google Notes for my iPad back up. Google Notes is a program in for your iPad or I don't know if, I don't know if it's for um, um, Windows. I know it's for iPad, but and then I downloaded a free budgeting um, file. And for me, budgeting doesn't work if there's too many restrictions. Like I said, I like to shop. I like what I like. I want what I want. But I also wanted to kind of take stock of what I'm spending. So my first step was in January. I just lived my regular crazy life. I did the things. Now, the one thing that is not accounted for is my coffee consumption that I purchased outside of the house because I'm still using up all the gift cards I got for Christmas. So that number will be forthcoming. But like gas, I went through all of my statements. I used one credit card for gas because I get triple points for that. So I spent in January like $150 on gas for my car. And that obviously is going to work. And then also for YouTubing and whatever. So that's what I did. I went through all my bank statements and I was like, okay, how much do I spend on pet food a month? And I come to find out I spend about $100 a month on the cats. Now that's their wet food, that is treats, and that is kitty litter. That is not like anything medical or Wellington's medication, which costs me about $15 every two months. 
So what I did is I'm going through and I'm just documenting. I'm not worrying about what I'm doing. I'm just kind of documenting where my money's going because I can swipe a card fast and I can justify a lot of things. So I'm like, all right, let's just take a look and see. Um, and plus January is a good time for me because typically after Christmas, I'm done spending and I just want to kind of live like basic until I start Christmas shopping again. And then I decided um, last year, I put things out on Facebook Marketplace pretty regularly. Sometimes I, I'll get things to review like I've shown you and I don't really have a need to continue keeping it. So I do sometimes sell that on sell items on Facebook Market and things for my house that I don't have any need for. Like I had a KitchenAid mixer uh, and then when my aunt passed away, I got a bigger, stronger mixer. So I sold my old one, just like that. So whenever money comes in the house, also pet sitting. I cat sit for my neighbor and she does pay me, although I keep telling her she doesn't have to. So all that money kind of went into an envelope here on my desk. And I decided this year I want to do the 100 envelope challenge. So we're going to talk about that now because I'm going to have a giveaway. I'll tell you about that in a second. But in the giveaway, I'll tell you how to enter. The giveaway is for this container here. And I did decorate it with my Cricut. And then I have inside 100 envelopes and they're all numbered. The only thing is you'll have, they're a little tall for this. So you'll either have to lay them down or you can just fold it you know, fold the top over more so they'll fit standing up. But there are 100 envelopes in here that are numbered. This is part of the giveaway. Um, and then I'll go show you how we do it. So this is the giveaway. And then I'll show you mine. So mine looks like this. I just have a few envelopes filled. And I used everything I had on in my house, including this little box. Um, so what I did is I went through and I have laminating sheets. I got them at Aldi. They're not great. Um, and I had craft paper, but they don't need to be great because here is the premise. So I have this little baggie and I just, anytime I have cash and I try to take out cash once a week um, and I spend my cash and whatever I have left goes into this envelope. And then if I sell something on Facebook Market and they pay me cash, it goes in this envelope. So any cash, cat sitting, whatever, extra coffee money, it goes in this envelope. And then I have a tracker. And this was a free download from, I don't know who, 101planners.com. And I say, okay, well, I have 101 envelopes. And the premise goes, envelope number one, you put $1 in. $2, three, and the, whatever the number is, is the corresponding amount of money. So envelope number 31, I would put $31 or more. I mean, it doesn't matter what you put in, but you want to put at least the denomination, you know, the money amount that's listed. So if you follow this and you fill all 101 envelopes, I, I needed a thumbnail, um, you will have at the end of this challenge, $5,050. If you just literally put the minimum of in this envelope here, you put $87. You put $88. If you do that at the end of the time, and whenever the time is, I don't have a set time on mine. I'm just stashing money. So, and I took some money that I had last year and I was able to stop to stash these envelopes. So I have in here five, $15 left over. And if I don't have cash out during that specific week, then I just go and get some out of the ATM at my bank. Hence the ones I work for the bank and they stock our, pers our in office ATM with $1 bills so we can go. But so what I'm going to do is fill this $15 I'm just going to put it all into envelope 12. That's all. And then once it goes in, it stays in. I'll put it in order in there. And then I will color the number 12. And I know that I've already filled that envelope. You do not have to have this tracking sheet. It's just a visual representation 
for me. So I just filled envelope number 12. I will put it away and be done with it. And then next one I want to fill. So these will all be filled up when I, you know, have the money to do so. For me, like I said, there's no set time frame on this. I would like it done by next year, mainly because my cut, I'm putting it away, 12. My cousin and I are probably going to be taking a little trip with her daughter when she graduates high school. Not my cousin, her daughter. And I'm just trying to get these to stand up. And um, yeah, so I would like to have it to pay for that trip. But it, if it don't, I don't. And then I just keep this in a safe place. Um, I don't recommend keeping too terribly much cash on hand, but I don't have that much in there. Now, oh, sorry. I was talking to some friends at work about this and they were, you know, we were just chit chatting and the one friend was like, well, I don't have that much cash. I don't, you know, filling the smaller ones is obviously easy. A dollar, two dollar, three dollar, five, ten. But when you get up to the higher denominations, what I do is put it in that little bag until I have enough to fill an envelope. Or you can take your littler envelopes, combine them together to fill the bigger ones, and then go back and fill your smaller envelopes again. I mean, there's no right and wrong. There's no rule to this. So that's my savings at home challenge this year. I'm not doing sinking funds and all that, but we will talk about it. So this is part of the giveaway. It's going into the box. So for me, it's about the side hustle. I don't technically pay myself. I had a piece of trash. I don't technically pay myself um, for my small business right now. I, it just kind of goes into a savings because I'm really nervous about taxes. Um, so once that is all said and done, then I will pay myself something after I do my taxes and then that money will get taken care of. Um, I got to get my notepad back up here. Now, as long as we're talking about savings challenges, we'll go over a few things. If you don't want to buy a setup, which you can buy on Etsy, you can get them on the internet, you can just buy 50 envelopes. You can get one of these and just cut the envelopes in half and tape them shut, or you can get two of these and you just put them in a shoebox and now you have 100 envelopes. It doesn't have to be fancy and formal. And like I said, the one that I made, I 100% had all that stuff here in my house. I was not going to go out and buy anything. If I was, it was going to be these envelopes. But when I went through and took some inventory, I'm like, oh, I can totally make my own. And the one that I got for you is part of my channel. But Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five. So for two dollars and fifty cents, you can have a hundred envelopes and a marker. Um, you can also use these stickers if you're doing different challenges. These are dimensional, so they're bumpy, but they are super fun. However, in order to make a hundred out of this, it would be very costly. You would have to buy multiple packages of stickers like this. Um, when I did for the 100 envelope challenge, I cut all this out on my Cricut, including all these numbers. So it was one sheet, actually one sheet or quarter of a sheet for the gold and the silver was one 24 inch sheet. So two 12 inch sheets to make all the stickers. But you know, for my own, I used a marker. Savings challenge, another item that you need is a calculator. Everybody needs that, but if you're going to be doing any kind of cash budgeting, calculators are fantastic. So that's going in the giveaway. Um, there's a lot of options with this. This is, it's technically a coupon holder, but if you're wanting to spend cash, you can use this to hold your cash. You can also use this to stash your cash. So this is going into the giveaway as well. And if you saw my Dollar Tree haul, I got all this stuff. I got, I showed it to you. So there's going to be a lot of things in there, some different ideas. Another thing to stash your cash in are these little pencil envelopes or little pencil bags. Take the paper out, obviously. You can rip this, whatever this is, out of here. And now you have a clear little bag stash your money. If you will look up on YouTube, there is millions of videos of folks who are doing cash stashing. Um, a lot of it too, like sinking funds, which I may get into. I grabbed a couple binders from Timu. Like this one here, these little envelopes are super hard plastic. 
You can write on the outside. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I did buy all this stuff myself. But you can put your cash in here so you can do like pets and groceries and all that if you want to do sinking funds which you know you take your cash out of the bank and you plan out your budget and you put your money in your envelopes and then you spend it from your cash um i also got these on timu with this three ring binder and this was all very reasonably priced now these are paper envelopes um so i'm not sure the longevity i mean they do have a shine to them and they're super cute and they have in here, one of this does. I don't know why only one does. That's weird. These have a, oh no, they all do. So you can open this up and there's a little serrated tab that will open up and you can write on it, you know, what monies is going to go in there. If you're choosing to do some kind of cash envelope system which is super fun. And this is, these are reasonably priced. You can also get them on Amazon, I'm sure. Um, oh, for budgeting purposes, you don't have to go digital. Here's a little budgeting book. This one is going in the giveaway. I got this on Amazon. Uh, the calendar is 22, 23, but it doesn't matter because they're blank pages, but it's how to keep track of your expenditures. So in here you have a week at a time, how much income you made and how much you spent. So if you have any side hustles, you can write your cash down. I fed the cats, I paid me $20 and I spent $10 on coffee. I mean, really basic. And you don't even have to use these all in one week. It's just a great way to track your expenses. And if you're going to budget, you got to know what you're spending where. Like that's the key takeaway. And that's the part I dislike the most is, I mean, I don't dislike it, but it's the most uncomfortable Part of budgeting is taking a really close look at what you're spending and where and maybe cut out some of those bad habits. I did not go to Dunkin' Donuts on my way to work in the whole month of July, of January. I know. Like that to me is a huge thing. I, I get lazy and I'd rather just go to Dunkin' on my way to work and get a coffee and be done with the morning. But I need to stop doing that. That could be, that's $4 a day. You know, that's a lot of money. It adds up. So we're not doing that. Um, on Timu, I got something for myself that's a little different because I don't need, I have a spreadsheet for monthly expenses. I just need something to have to write down, like the very basic. It's the same concept, income up here, expenses, but this is the columns I need to track. Um, what are my fixed expenses for that month? Like, and that's the other thing. Sometimes we have expenses we don't even know about or we're not paying attention to, like my Amazon. When does my Amazon come out? Yeah, I have no idea. Like, I don't know. I need to find that out. You know, I have my Audible that comes out. So services or yearly renewals. I have a PO box for my business that comes out twice a year. I need to know when that's going to happen. So I need to sit down and go through my bank statements. I know it's uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it. Um, if you want to be a cash budgeter, which for me is easier than swiping. I got this on Timu as well. And I think I'll put this in the giveaway, but it's a little wallet, but you can put your cards in here. Sure. But what you also can do is put money in here. So designate each little section as your cash money for that week. So if you know you have, and you can just put a little card in there. This is for gas. This is for pet food. This is my coffee, my fun money, my beauty money. And then this can just go right in your purse. And you have all of your cash with you. And then you're not swiping your card all the time. Because for me, swiping my card isn't like spending money. So this will go in the giveaway as well. Um, I also got this one. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not. If I don't, I'll give it in a future one. And I made these little um, cash dividers with some vellum. Again, I had all this material on hand. But for me, it was shopping, groceries, miscellaneous, a.k.a. coffee, and the pets. Because I do. So I have an auto ship for the boys' cat food. And it is 
all their wet food from Chewy. So it comes to my door, but it's $75 a month. I need to remember to write that down. It comes right out of my checking account, but I still need to get them cat litter. And they do get one box of treats and that's $75. But I want to have extra money on hand because they need cat litter. And if I want to buy them extra treats, we need to do that. So for me, that's part of my budgeting is just opening my eyes to what I'm spending and just stop willy-nilly swiping. Now, I picked up, this will go in the giveaway. These are like my little bag over there. These are for my cash. When I am doing some type of side hustle. And let me tell you, if you live in Massachusetts or a state that does bottle deposits and you do your bottle returns, I need the trash can. <sighs> I would be stashing that money right in here. I remember the days of those. So this is just, I, mean, it, I think it's funny because I see a lot of this bag and I'm like, oh, you got that on Timu because so did I. And you can put vinyl on the front, but your bills fit perfectly in here. And if you're stashing up for something, cash. So I think we've gotten away from cash and that's the unfortunate part that a lot of businesses don't do cash anymore. So I, that's why I'm not doing a straight cash budget. I am monitoring what I'm spending from my paycheck, but I'm cash allotting for unessentials, coffees, stuff like that. So it's like plastic, but because it is, it's rubbery plastic. So I grabbed one of these because these are essential if you're gonna save your cash. Um, these are also some spending envelopes that I got, which are fantastic. So if you're going to do a cash budget, you would put the topic up here. Um, what is your budget? And then what are your expenses? So every time you put money in here or take money out, you keep a running total. And these are nice because they have a lot of space on them. And then obviously your money goes in here and then you just fold it down. And these fit into the in the binders into, I think this is an A6. I think this is an A6, A7, A8. I believe this is an A8 size. This is an A7 and an A6. So that's how they measure in Europe and over everywhere but in the U.S., and you have to kind of know the measurement of what you want. So this little one is like an A6. I think this is an A7 with the six holes and that does fit in here. So you could do your cash stuffing in that. I will throw these in the giveaway as well. And oh, the other thing, if you're getting your dollars and spending your budgeting, you're getting change back. And so having a cute little jar to fill your change in is essential. I think anyway. So these are kind of some of the tools I'm using, right? To help me stay organized. The Dollar Tree is a great resource for if you wanna make your own folders or any kind of envelopes. They have all kinds of paper and tape. You don't need a laminator, paper and tape work just fine. Stickers, so you can label your envelopes or whatnot. Throw those in the giveaway as well. And you can have the envelopes too. So how do you enter the giveaway? Well, oh, you need some number stickers too, maybe. Uh, those may not fit in the box, we'll see. Um, how do you enter? You leave a comment below. I do ask that you be a subscriber to my channel and you put the word challenge somewhere in the comment box, challenge. Please do not say giveaway or anything surrounding that. The bots out there are picking up those keywords and then you're gonna get a lot of people entering or trying to cheat you out of something because I will never ask you for money. I will never ask you for anything of that nature. So keep that in mind. Um, so now that January is over and I have identified most of my spending habits, now comes a time where I'm gonna write my budget and I'm gonna say, okay, well, 150 a month is what you're spending on gas right now. Can't really control gas, I have to go to work. The other place that I like to kind of go a little above and beyond is groceries, which I need to roll that back to. I don't need to go to Costco and Sam's once a week. I'm a single lady, guys, I live here. I don't need to spend, I don't need to buy bulk all the time, although it is very convenient. So I'm gonna dial back my groceries a little bit and I'm gonna get cash out of the bank and start using more cash because cash 
doesn't spin for me as easy as swiping my bank card does. So I'm not sure if that's really what type of video you're looking for. I'm not, I don't have whole numbers yet as far as, um, I'm opening up my budget as far as what I have, because I don't, um, I'm not paying off debt, if that makes sense. So I need to figure out now. So I guess my goal is I'm writing down what I spent. Like I got my hair cut. That's money. I spent, oh, that's February. In January, my unexpected expense was tires and brakes. And that ended up dropping. Sorry, I'm having an issue here. Here we go. Uh, tires and brakes ended up costing me $1,682.68. I needed four new tires and a set of brakes and rotors. So that's unexpected. So I need to build up, I want to build up a savings that is for, I do have, I mean, I have my money in a savings account, but I need to say, this money here in this savings account is for any kind of medical expense that comes up, any kind of emergency. Getting, I need to start thinking about next time I need tires and brakes. Like I need to think ahead instead of being reactive. I need to be proactive with my money. The other thing is I want to start sending money to a high yield savings account. So what that is, is typically it's an online like the lending tree or green leaf savings or something. I'm still in the research process of that. Um, but what I would like to do is say, okay, well, if my credit card payments were $300 a month and I don't have that, I would like to take that $300 and send it to a high yield savings account that will earn five, 6% interest, but it's not attached to my bank account and I can't just transfer funds over and spend it because something fun and shiny comes along or I need something crafty or whatever. Like I want to send it and I, so my... I have some stuff at Ameriprise Financial. I need to see what they have to offer in like a high yield situation because I already have that set up. So those are kind of the things I'm in the process of researching on that front. Also, all of my revenues or income streams, like I need to sit down, I don't really pay attention. So I have my part-time job at the Shot and Scene Center. I have my day job at the bank. That's my bread and butter job. And then I have my Etsy and my YouTube. So I have actually split all that up and that my life and living and home all comes from my personal checking account and all my savings and everything. And then all my side, side hustle money goes into another bank, to another account. And I use that for my business. But I need to track it. I need to start paying attention. I need to stop living life on autopilot with my finances. Um, so I wrote down, you know, my mortgage. How much are my condo fees? How much is my car payment? My car insurance. Who knew it went from 78 to 95? I, I didn't. I mean, fundamentally, did I know? Probably. But did I pay attention? No. Until I was like, what do you mean my insurance is $95 a month? Where did that come from? Uh, apparently last year. So I need to look into that situation. Um, my gas bill, my electric, cable phone, that just kind of is what it is. Um, I have Disney Plus for streaming, which comes with Hulu and ESPN. Um, I do belong to a cross-stitching floss club once a month. I have my Apple Cloud once a month. And then the things that only bill me once a year is my Amazon Prime, my Audible, and my Canva. Oh, but I also have a P.O. Box, but excuse me, I guess that's on my, I guess that would be on my business stuff, because that's for my business. Oh, and then I have the cat's auto feeding, which is 75 per month, I think. I just upped it because I wasn't getting enough wet food to last a month. And my goal is to have their food just come to my house. So like, I need to look into those things that just happen automatically and keep an eye on them because I tend to set it and forget it if you're a Ronco person. And I just say, okay, well, here's my, here's my Hulu bill. That is what it is. There's nothing I can do about that. There is something I can do about that. Do I use it? 
I, I do. I use the, I mean, that's the only streaming service I pay for and I don't have cable. So I'm not mad for paying $17 a month to have some TV. Um, my Apple Cloud is 99 cents a month. Amazon Prime, I need to look to really evaluate. Audible, I that's my I use that all the time. And my Canva is technically a business expense. So Canva and my P.O. Box come out of my business expense. So that's not even that probably should not be on my budget because it's not something that comes out of this account. There, I took it off. That comes out of my business expenses. So I hope that was at least somewhat entertaining to you or interesting. Uh, next up, we're gonna be talking about dying. Isn't that fun? I know. All right, guys, I've been blabbering on here enough. I hope you enjoy. Please do enter, like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I will do the drawing in a couple weeks just to give you some plenty of time to enter. Thank you very much and have a great one. Bye.